You know what sucks? Traffic. Stop and go, stop and go, intersection after intersection. And if there's a train, good luck getting home. If only there was a way to just get rid of traffic. Hmm. Okay, so a little background. A long time ago, I came across a video of someone playing City Skylines in which they were trying to build an entire city on one road. And so one day, I brought the concept up to some friends during lunch. They all had a good laugh and joked about how stupid of an idea it was. Now, that could've been the end of it right there. But when I got home that night and sat down to do some, uh, paperwork, I started thinking. What followed that day were many, many conversations with friends, family, and anyone else who would and wouldn't listen about how you could build a functioning city on one singular road. Hence, why we're here today. But before we get into the main attraction, a few ground rules. First, the city must remain on one straightaway road, with no intersections. Driveways and parking lots are fine, but anything that consistently causes your car to come to a complete stop is banned. Second, the city must be self-sustaining and have the capacity to hold a city's worth of people. This can't just be a couple shacks on the side of the highway. Googling around, I found that 1,500 to 50,000 people living in one place is classified as a city. That's a big margin, but we'll aim for that 1,500 bare minimum. Third, all of these must be somewhere on the map. I can mix and match them as need be, but they actually have to be present in some form. And finally, because cities are very big and very complicated, this map is going to simplify things for the sake of brevity. Obviously, I'm not going to place 1,500 copies of the same house on this map. I mean, come on, that would be ridiculous. Bum, 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 we can't use this music because it's copyright. With all that out of the way, it's time for me to put up or shut up. Let's build a one-road society, starting with transportation. Being a one-road society, it only makes sense to start with the main attraction, the road. But two lanes in either direction is not nearly enough. If we want to completely eliminate traffic, we've got to give the cars some room to drive. So, 24 lanes, 12 on each side. Might be a bit overkill, but now there's plenty of room for everybody. And while we're at it, let's plop some railroad tracks right in the middle. These three lines will handle the bulk of goods coming in and out of the city. Since trains are far stronger than semis, they'll be able to handle more cargo per trip, thus cutting down on road traffic. We'll still need trucks, of course, but we'll get to that in a second. Since we have three tracks, we'll need points connecting all of them together. And for good measure, let's put up some barricades to keep any accidents from happening. Now this is a good start, and we could easily start populating either side of the highway at this point, but there's one small problem. If you live here, and your work is here, how do you get across the railroad tracks? Even if you did manage to get past the barricades, there's still a bunch of trains trudging back and forth at relatively high speeds. Not good. To fix this, we need to talk about overpasses. Since U-turns are impossible for obvious reasons, an easy fix is to add roads going over the rails. To keep the right shoulder free for hashtag city stuff, we'll place the overpasses on the farthest left two lanes. Why two lanes? Because we actually ran into another problem when we put the railroad tracks in place. Sure, a train is great for moving things from point A to point B, but if it can't stop anywhere to drop off its goods, then you can see the problem. Thankfully, the double lane overpasses solved this problem quite nicely, as we can turn the underside of these overpasses into loading docks for trucks. And having two lanes instead of one means we can add a nice little merging road right here to help the trucks get in and out of the loading zones without breaking the rules for this challenge. Or the face of an oncoming driver, take your pick. And if you're looking to get across the street on foot, I've also added some underground pathways that'll let you safely get to the other side of the road. I'm not exactly sure what these pathways would consist of. Maybe they'd be like the moving walkways you see in an airport. Maybe they'd just be normal tunnels. Either way, they'd be deep enough underground so you wouldn't go deaf from all the cars above you. And they'd absolutely have to have security personnel and security cameras. We'll come back to the roads and rails later, but for now, let's shift over to the next part of the city. Residential areas. So I have a rule when it comes to buildings on the far right side of the road. If you have to pull in for whatever reason, you use this road. Otherwise, you keep driving in the middle line. Same rules apply for how you'd pull out of a building. And it isn't that different from how you'd merge into traffic normally. With this in mind, we can place houses, apartments, all the usual living locations along this first stretch of road. While we could totally fit all 1,500 people in just one section, I'm going to limit the neighborhoods to roughly 100 people, both to keep the map simple and to keep my computer from imploding. 
Houses and apartments are no different from how they'd be normally. Driveways? Fine. Parking lots? Cool. Underground parking? Go for it. I've decided to place schools as close to the middle of the neighborhoods as I can. This gives the neighborhood a common gathering area for things like sporting events and votes, and gives kids the ability to walk to and from school. Going further up the road, you'll eventually run into the more densely populated parts of the neighborhood, before finally ending up at our next point of discussion, essential services. These include things like hospitals, firehouses, police stations, and clinics. I put these four as close to the residential area as possible, as I think first responders should be within spitting distance of the most populated part of town. Because all of this gets mirrored on the other side of the road, an ambulance coming this way can take the overpass to get back to the hospital on the other side of the street. Same goes for police and firefighters. This will also keep the residential parts of town fairly safe, since I doubt anyone would try to break into someone's home when police are just up the road, and don't need to go against traffic to get to you. I mean, sure, people deciding to drive against traffic are gonna be hard to catch, but you're going against traffic. If you ask me, you've got more immediate problems than outrunning the cops. Ah, crap. Moving past the essentials, let's talk about goods and services. Things like stores, restaurants, mechanics, gas stations, banks, and the post office. These aren't as important as hospitals and the like, but I've still put them fairly close to the essentials. While it's not specifically marked on the map, I imagine there'd be multiple stores along this strip right next to one another. Same goes for restaurants, which you often see in busy main streets to begin with. I've also got the bank right next to the post office. Since employers send checks through the mail, it's just more convenient to have those two close together. There's also some lower rent apartments here for those who like to live close to their jobs. I chose apartments over houses just because you can fit more people per building. I imagine we could get another 150 people in just this area alone. And then next to that is the factory complex. This includes your plastics and metals, your food processing, and the water treatment plant, etc, etc. I wanted these to be as far away from the neighborhood as possible, while still in the city limits. So I put them right next to all the shops. Stores now have easy access to goods being made at the factories, which cuts down on travel time for delivery trucks, and sewage doesn't have to go that far either, while still being generally out of the public eye. Now, let's transition over to the other side of the neighborhood to talk about parks and recreation. Not the hit TV show, I mean literal parks and recreation, starting with a big sportsplex on the edge of the neighborhood. Studies show that crime is typically lower in places where there's easy access to physical activity, and if sports movies have taught me anything, then yeah, I'ma put some sports stuff here. You got your basketball, your hockey, volleyball, badminton, there's swimming pools, we're basically running a giant YMCA. Right next to the sportsplex is a big park for those who want to do some more leisurely exercise. You can park your car, go for a walk, do park things, I don't know. And since a town like this needs a landmark, I've decided this park will also contain the world's largest rabbit statue. Why the world's largest rabbit statue? Because I like rabbits, that's why. Do I really need a reason? Next to the park is the church and graveyard. The idea of having a church next to the park is just really sweet in my mind. Just a nice, peaceful place to come and worship. Beside the church is the museum, as well as some other goods and services to round out the town a little. One really nice part about this setup is that the entire city is copy-pastable. You can repeat this setup as long as you want on either side of the highway. Certainly puts all the time I spent into drawing this half of the road into perspective, but whatever. And now that we've talked at length about what's in the town, let's take a look at everything that's behind it. Namely, the farming branch. The farming branch is fairly simple, yet incredibly lucrative when you think about it. As the name suggests, this part of the town is only accessible by rail, and is miles and miles of nothing but farmland. As far as the city goes, that's how much land the farmers have to work with. On both sides. Everything from wheat to corn and cows to chickens, these farms do it all. And when it's time to bring it all to market, they just have to load it up onto the train, and off it goes. Simple, yet elegant. Following these tracks will eventually be brought to the final part of the city, the end of the road. Alas, all roads have to end eventually, but that doesn't mean there's nothing out here. At the far reaches of the city are a number of important services. First and foremost is City Hall. This is where the mayor of the city, i.e. me, gets to do all the mayoral things, like raise taxes and tweet. Next is the rail yard, which actually extends outside the city via a bridge going over the road. This is where all the trains are shunted and the engines are serviced. Not far from the rail yard is the airport. Goods coming from other parts of the world are picked up from here by rail and brought to the unloading docks along the line. And visitors traveling to the city will have literally zero trouble learning where to go. I mean, it's pretty hard to get lost. 
the farming branch also links up with the rail yard, and by extension, the airport, making exporting foods to other parts of the world incredibly easy. Across from the airport is the dump and the maximum security prison. These are exactly what you think they are. It didn't make sense to put the dump inside the town, so I decided to move it as far away as possible. Same thing goes with the prison. It's just a lot easier to drop off criminals serving long sentences at the end of the road rather than in the middle of town. Also, before anyone asks, no, that doesn't mean there aren't holding cells in the town. Those are in the police station. You've probably noticed by now that these roads are only two lanes each. And that's because anyone not going out of city limits can take the overpass to loop back around. The loop has solid lines, indicating that you can't change lanes as you turn around. Same goes for the very end of the circuit. Which, no, is not a 90 degree turn, it's just drawn that way. Finally, barring City Hall, all of this is reflected on the other side of the city. And that, my friends, is the entire One Road Society. Now, by this point, you're probably asking yourself, why did I do this? Why did I sit down and spend hours of my life plotting out an entire society on one 24-lane highway with overpasses and railroad tracks and all this other stuff? What's the point? Well, like I said at the beginning of this video, me and my friends have talked about this a lot. And in those countless debates, the word impossible got tossed around a lot. I don't like that word. I think impossible has become a crutch word that people use when they can't figure out something difficult. It's easier to say something's impossible and move on, rather than to sit down and try to figure it all out. But the way I see it, there are a lot of things that people said were impossible until someone else proved them wrong. It was impossible to travel across the ocean until it wasn't. It was impossible to make it into space until it wasn't. And sure, it might be impossible to reasonably build an entire society on one 24-lane highway, but if this video has been about anything, it's that every problem has a solution. Whether it be something hypothetical like this, a real logistical problem, or something much more personal. I didn't make this video because I wanted to show off my graphic design skills, or rant at you about railroad tracks and 24 lanes for 10 minutes. I made it to show that whatever problem you're facing, however big, however small, is never impossible. It might be difficult, it might take everything that you have to overcome, but with enough work, thought, and creativity, you can always find an answer. And that's the point of the One Road Society. Being able to stare down the impossible, smile, and find a way forward. <laughs>